Hey guys, Nathan from the Spencer's Mate YouTube channel giving you a little overview of uh, some of the effects that I used in my slow motion Final Cut protest and how I achieved the really smooth slow motion all within Final Cut. Um, so this is my project here. Uh, you can see first tip is just to keep organized. I've compressed all this stuff into compound clips so it's not so clutter, cluttery and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to focus on this compound clip here, which was the first one, which looks a little bit like this. So yeah, I'm just going to bring this, um, like expand this clip. Okay, so the first thing I did to all my clips before I cut them up and did all the editing was I color corrected them. So I'll bring this one up. This is my um, color corrector. It was just a little custom one I pulled up. Um, I tend to do this a lot. Is um, I try to get a film sort of look. So to do that, I go into the exposure tab and I bring down the blacks, uh, bring up the whites, and I just fiddle around with the mids, uh, mid tones, and you get a really nice looking image. And also for this, these bars, I um, just crop the image from the top and the bottom. Uh, this one I actually dragged it down because there wasn't enough footage at the bottom. So normally it's 10 at the top and 10 at the bottom. Um, but this one, it's I moved it down 10 pixels and did it the other way around. So yeah, that's how I get the film look. Um, next is how I slowed down the um, footage. So I come over here into my retime menu, which is this one here. And then you can choose how slow it is. So if you select one of these, I'm going to slow mine down even more. And so you can drag these handles around, make it really slow, really fast. Um, I'm not going to do that to render because that will take a lot of time. Okay, so once you've selected how long you want it to be, you're going to go to video quality, uh, still under the retiming menu, and select optical flow. This is, um, what this is doing is kind of like what Twixter does where Final Cut Pro is actually making new frames in between each frame. So it's, it's, this is footage is remaining at 25 frames per second, but it's still slowed down, which is why it is really, really smooth, slow motion. Um, so now the effects that I used. Um, so here we can see a nice little flash effect. So that, that is called um, Intro Flashes, which is over here. Uh, it's a really nice effect. It's not very customizable, so it tends to always flash, zoom in on the bottom of the screen, and then flash back out again. Um, if you wanted more customizability, I guess you could cut this up and then zoom in and change the exposure around really quickly. Um, that's definitely possible, but it would be it would take a lot of time because, so as you can see, there's no options for this intro flashes. Um, I also use some. There's another intro flashes. I use some bokeh effects, which is um, these, which is what you um, when you go out of focus on DSLRs, you can get this sort of effect on pretty much any camera, I guess. And I also use an artifacts one, which is just kind of like lens flare, um, but a little bit different. Um, and for the reverse effect that I used, um, wait, I put a mark somewhere here. Okay, this reverse effect, so it goes splash out, splash back in, and splash back out. Um, unfortunately, I can't just cut the clip, and so say that's going normal way, and then select reverse clip, because that reverses it from the very end of the clip, so it reversed this, which is not what I wanted. So what I actually had to do, which is kind of a bit annoying, is um, find the frame, sort of memorize it. So you can see up here, there was a little dot. And then I go into my splash sub bin uh, category thing over here. I think this is the clip I want. No, it's in here somewhere. And then I have to look for the same frame. So it's that frame there. And then I have to drag backwards, take that into here, and then reverse it, which is kind of annoying. But 
you know, you, I have to, I had to do it. Or um, use the other Final Cut Pro, Final Cut Pro 7, which, I don't know. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much all the effects I used on this. Um, and then for the quick intro I did at the, the end, that's just a um, standard built-in, where is it? Themes, I think it's under themes. I might be wrong. Okay, well, yeah, that's just a, um, it's a built-in, built-in title. Well, it'd be under titles, I guess. Yeah, there, ink. So it's ink dropping down. Looks pretty cool, I think, so. Um, yeah, I did some of the same. That's the, um, bokeh random, and it's got some other random effects on it. But I think this is a bit more customizable. Effects, or maybe not. I guess not, that's really annoying. This is one I don't like about the new Final Cut Pro is how stuff isn't customizable like before. Um, you used to be able to do tons more stuff and really make it look like you want this one. It sort of like feels a bit like iMovie in the way that you're sticking to the templates and you don't really want to go too far away from them. Um, but other than that, the new Final Cut Pro is pretty good and I was able to get a really cool video out of it. Um, and it was really easy to do. Um, so, yeah, that's, thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, overview, I guess really, it's not really a full tutorial. And, um, yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.